<laughs> Hi guys, it's Nicole. Welcome to our Facebook Live today and we're going to talk about fall doormats using Cricut Iron-On as our stencil. We've been so inspired by projects that we've seen in our Cricut community and so today we are going to make our own. Now let's jump into a little presentation I have for you talking about what you'll need. So here we can see one of these beautiful all dressed up Hey There Pumpkin custom doormats that one of our lovely community members made and shared with us. And we have another one that is so personalized, so customized, and it shows a little bit more of the process. It's just adorable. This one makes me laugh. I need to make it for my house as well. Um, just hilarious. And our love grows here. So cute. And it even has some tips and tricks in the post itself. So for our mat today that we're going to make, um, I tried many different ways and this is what I came up with to make it the easiest, um, just really set you up for success. So we got a nice coconut mat um, in a smaller size so it's a little bit easier to uh, handle. Then we have our paint, painter's tape, brushes, and like I said, we used iron-on. Um, that just really made it a lot simpler for me to put together. Uh, press cloth and our press, press cloth and our easy press mini. Um, I did use a large one for the original ones I made. And this is the finished one sitting outside my door. And um, you can check a link, check the link in the comments for the canvas we used if you want to make this um, particular doormat. Um, but otherwise. I'm going to sh jump into Design Space and show you how I designed it real quick. So here we have a blank canvas. We're going to just really quick grab a template for our mat. Our mat is about 24 inches wide by about 16 inches tall. And you can change the color just to make it make a little more sense to you. Then we're going to go in here into images. And in images, I just typed in Hello Fall. We're going to get lots of really cute projects. I want one that's all one color without too many small or thin things. So we have it right there. I'm going to insert that and I'm just going to place it. Now we want to make sure that we can cut it um, all on one sheet. So I just brought it to about 4.11.45. Center it. I think that looks good. And that's all you got to do. I left, um, I centered it once I, oh, let's turn off this guy. Okay. I centered it once it was on the mat so that I had the nice straight edges already and gave myself a little bit of room here as well. Now remember this is iron on so we got to make sure that we mirror it because we will be placing it mirrored orientation. So and then we would just hit continue Now that's going to look for my maker but I've already pre-cut this and have it here ready so if we want to switch so you can see I've also weeded it most of the way just have a few more little spots right here to do for the little pine cone it's hard to do on this map <laughs> Now, you may wonder if using iron-on will be a problem, but because this coconut mat is so textured, it will only stick, the iron-on will only stick as well as we need it to, to be able to paint it. 
so it will not be a problem. Now I'm just going to show you a quick corner of this and you can eyeball it or you can measure it. We're just going to press that down. I also have a press cloth. This is just a piece of cotton that I use so I don't burn myself and so that I can peel it a little bit more effectively. Now I also used the iron-on liner. I kept it intact after I peeled it off to use as a low-tack transfer tape if I do end up trying to do this again um, with vinyl, permanent vinyl instead of iron-on. That's really the trick if you're using something like vinyl that needs a transfer tape um, is having a low tack transfer tape because it just will not stick very well to the coconut mat. I'm just going to let that cool down a little bit. Once that is cooled, I can show you how I press it or I um, peel it. And I really liked using the mini um, to get all the little details because all of these little spots are what's going to try to come up. And I just have it on the middle setting. That seemed to work just great. That spot is probably cool enough for us now. Maybe. It's just that corner. It's always going to be tricky. So just make sure you use your hand or something to hold that down. I put my press cloth here so that I can, um, so that if this comes back down, it won't re-stick to it. That's where I had some some troubles before. And I had that at a pretty sharp angle and also bent back pretty far to just try to keep that down. You see that's working pretty well. And then if there are any spots that I want to or need to repress, I just use the press cloth instead of the liner that gets in there just helps secure it a bit but to not bore you with that I'm going to go to one that we have already sprayed now we did use um, this flex seal spray um, for these ones it gave us a really great sturdy and durable finish. Um, I don't even think that I need to do any kind of a sealant. You're welcome to if you'd like. Um, but I feel like it did great just with that. Um, and you can see I used the high tack tape around the edges of the iron-on and then I used larger, uh, cheaper, <laughs> tape for the outer edges to kind of keep that sealed so that I didn't have any overspray and uh, mess up the rest of the, the corners of my mat. But you can kind of see that it actually, so I pre-peeled that to kind of see how well it did, but you can see that it really worked well. And this is iron-on and it's coming up just fine. So. If you were using vinyl, you still wouldn't be able to reuse that stencil. That's just not really possible. So to me, this was totally worth it to not have to struggle at all with placing it since the iron-on already comes on that liner. And 
and it gives you a really nice finish. And let's be honest, it's pretty satisfying to peel that off <laughs> and see those lovely edges that we got from using the iron-on. So, I'd love to see, I hope you guys will share with me, all the fun projects that you guys make, all the fun doormats, funny or just seasonal. Just use your fingernails or if you want to use a weeder tool. I've also used my true control knife sometimes to get some of these pieces up, but you can see it comes up pretty easily. And voila! Beautiful, durable doormat that we made ourselves. You can do one for every season. And there you go. It's a little messy, but very cute, personalized, and pretty easy. So I'd love to see what you guys make. Please share with us. And until next time.